welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, nitrogen was such a big topic throughout the growing season in 2019 with heavy rainfall in certain areas. But here we go. We find ourselves again in the fall talking about fall nitrogen applications. We'll talk about some of the lessons we've learned and strategies going forward. We're also going to discuss fall herbicide applications. Fall is a fantastic time to get ahead of the weeds on your farm. We're going to talk about what products to use and when to spray on your farm this year. We've got a tough to control weed of the week, but first, here's our farm basics. You spend all year working hard to get as much yield as possible at harvest. The last thing you want to do is put your grain in the bin and have it spoil before you take it to market. Introducing the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer looking for a low-cost monitoring solution for existing bins, the Grain Temp Guard tracks temperature and humidity with an alarm system to alert you when your grain exceeds safe thresholds. For more information on a system for your bins, visit farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about cattle grazing out in corn stalks. Well, you'll see it every fall after harvest. There's just these corn stalks out there, and pretty soon, a farmer's got cattle out in their grazing them. And you say, well, what's going on? How, how much nutrition can they get out there when the corn's already out of the field? But actually, it ends up being a pretty good situation for the farmer and for the cattle. Yeah, and the reason why is because at harvest time, it just seems like there are always some ears that fall off. There are some kernels that fall on the ground from the combine. There's just a little bit of corn scattered throughout the field. So the cattle will graze on that, but then also on the stalks just to get some starch basically in that diet besides just the corn. There are a lot of stalks and a lot of residue out in the field. And when you think about it, for many farmers, they will harvest silage and bring that into the cattle if the cattle are in a yep. feedlot or if they've got a feed bunk that they can stay nearby during the winter, something like that. But when the weather is nice, the cattle love it to go out there and feed themselves out in the field. And the farmers like that too. So the whole thing is with farmers grazing these stalks, they have to have good fence around the property. And a lot of farmers like ourselves who don't have cattle on the farm anymore, we've taken the fences out. So one of the things that you do see from time to time is farmers will be out putting up fence posts and just putting one or two electric wires out there. And even just that is enough to keep the cattle inside the field because usually there is enough corn and enough stuff for them to forage on out there. Okay, so what are the impacts of having the cattle walking on the field? Is there going to be compaction from all the cattle trampling down the ground? There certainly can be, especially if the ground is really wet. So you'll see farmers, when it's dry out there, putting the cattle out in the pasture, but you'll also see them bring those cattle back in when you get heavy rains and you start having a lot of mud out in the field because they don't want to have a bunch of issues they've got to fix. But what the cattle are doing for them out in the pasture makes it worth taking some risk because they're actually converting all that residue that's going to take a long time to break down out in the field. They're converting it into manure right away. So farmers love that because manure has available fertilizer right now where corn stalks are going to take months and months and possibly even a couple of years to break down. The last thing that I wanted to throw out here is farmers do have to be a little bit careful because let's say that they sprayed a herbicide on their pasture in the late summer or early fall and now the cattle have taken some of that herbicide into their systems like Tordon for example that's super safe for cattle no problem. The only issue is if then some of their manure ends up out in the crop field, well now where each one of those droppings is, there might be a trace of Tordon left that could last quite a while in the soil and actually kill the next crop. So farmers have to be really careful about what they spray in their pasture and when, keeping the cattle off of that before they're gonna turn them out into cornfields. And before long, there'll be some snow out in many of these northern cornfields and then the farmers will bring the cattle back in because they, they don't want to have them going through two feet of snow trying to get to their food. But there is a nice time here where the weather is good in the fall for cattle to graze these stocks. It's a positive thing for the field, positive thing for the farmer, and a good place for the cattle to be too. Well, the one thing that I wish that cattle would do is very selectively go kill all our weeds and eat all our weeds out in the field. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to do that. So we'll talk about the herbicide options you've got for our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. 
Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. I think about what kind of farm I'm going to hand over to her. About how I can make it more successful, more sustainable. I talk to other farmers, with agronomists and advisors to help me make better decisions. To figure out what's working for them and how to make it work even better for my farm. Because when you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express end cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plant be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. It starts with genetics, what you're made of. It takes agronomy, it's local. It's knowing your land and having the tools to put the right product in the right place. It's built on service with trust, grit, and determination. Because it turns out, what it takes to make the best product is a lot like what it takes to make a farmer. Golden Harvest, rooted in genetics, agronomy, and service. Fall nitrogen applications have traditionally been very important on a lot of farms across the United States and around the world. A lot of people just look at, okay, what's the soil temperature? And if the soil temperature is 50 or less, now I'm good to go. Well, that's only one part of what we want you to focus on. Today, we're gonna to talk about many things that you should look at on your farm before you apply fall nitrogen. One thing that I'll start with, Brian, is a word of caution. One of the things that's happening in politics today is that people are watching nitrate levels in water and normally this is something that you're going to see out there all the time but when farmers are applying nitrogen people in town don't necessarily understand what we're doing exactly and why and why we would do it now so they're certainly looking at nitrate levels around areas where farming is being done so do be cautious and know exactly how much nitrogen you really need to be putting out there and you don't want to overdo it for sure. Yeah, and the big thing here is know what your soil can hold because let's face it, all these non-farmers want to talk about farmers over applying fertilizer and I say, that's ridiculous. Have you ever met a farmer that wants to waste money? I don't think so. So you've got to understand what's your cation exchange capacity in your soil. For example, if your cation exchange capacity or CEC number is eight, just multiply whatever that number is times 10. That'll tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. So if your CEC is eight, multiply it times 10, that's 80 pounds. Well, if there's already 40 pounds sitting out in the soil, you tested your soil, there's 40 pounds sitting there, we'd tell you, you can only put 40 pounds on. You can't put 100 on, you can't put 200 on. You've got a very, very high chance of losing a bunch of that nitrogen. So look first at cation exchange capacity. Well, along with that, Brian, comes the question, are there some things I could do to possibly put just a little bit more? Maybe I don't like my cation exchange capacity in this field, and I say, man, I don't want to just apply 50 pounds in a CEC of five. I'd like to put on 70 pounds out there for whatever reason. Could I put a nitrogen stabilizer and be able to apply a little bit more? Now, here's the thing. Whenever you make that application of nitrogen, that's it. That's the last day that you really have control of what's going on out in the field. Now you're subject to what happens with weather. So will a nitrogen stabilizer help you a little bit? Absolutely. It will definitely help you a little bit, but will it help you for six months on way over applying what you can hold in that soil? Definitely not. So there is a fine line here. If you're pushing it just a little bit, it can help you, but if you're pushing it a lot, no way. The next thing you need to take a look at is what form of nitrogen are you going to apply? 
We used to put on a lot of anhydrous ammonia in the fall, and the reason why we did this is because when you put that anhydrous in the ground, right away it turned to ammonium, and ammonium is the nice, stable form of nitrogen. That's also the form that plants prefer to bring in. They can bring in nitrate too, but they prefer to bring in ammonium. Now that anhydrous ammonia is, let's just say, not banned, but used an awful lot less, we can't even source any locally for us here in South Dakota anymore. Okay, well now people say, all right, well I want to put urea on in the fall. Nah, I wouldn't do that. I want to put 28% on in the fall. I wouldn't do that either. So the only form that we really liked in the fall was anhydrous ammonia. Hey Brian, you mentioned that, but I, I do know a number of farmers that like to put just a little bit of 28% out there trying to help break those stalks down a little bit more. Now when you look at corn stalks out in a field, you've got something that's about 60 parts of carbon to one part of nitrogen, and for the microbes in the soil to break that down, we need that ratio to be a lot closer, maybe down in the 12 to 14 to 1 ratio. So to get there, Farmers need to put a little bit of nitrogen on or do some tillage and get some soil up on this residue. Either way, putting a small amount of nitrogen out there is fine. You're going to have lots of residue out there to tie that up to allow those microbes to start doing their job. Just to clarify here, the reason why we like ammonium and ammonium forms applied in the fall is because ammonium is positively charged, soil is negatively charged. A positive and a negative attract, so that ammonium isn't going anywhere. What we worry about is when the nitrogen source is already in the nitrate form or will convert to the nitrate form pretty quickly. Nitrate can leach pretty easily, and the reason why is because nitrate is negatively charged. Your soil is negatively charged, a negative and a negative repel, so that nitrate can flush out of that system pretty quickly. And again, the big thing here, and the reason why we're talking about this today, is we want you to be ultra careful about all your fall nitrogen applications so you don't lose it. It's an environmental concern, and certainly it is a worry for your pocketbook. We don't want you losing money. I've got two last points here. First of all, never put fall nitrogen out on ground that can flood. You just, like Brian said, have to be ultra conservative about this. If you've got some ground that's high and dry, that's heavy ground, sure. You can put some fall nitrogen out there, but just be cautious about that. And then the last thing is if you say, well, hey, I just want to eliminate that job in the spring. I want to get everything all out there in the fall. Boy, I would really caution you here. We've got some heavy ground. We're in an area of the country that normally doesn't get a huge amount of rainfall. I don't like putting everything out there. It just limits your choices down the road for one. If you say, boy, I can't get corn in on time. Now I'm going to put soybeans in and I've got a full load of nitrogen. I don't really like that very much. Uh, the other thing would, would be you just do have a risk of some loss. So getting a portion of that nitrogen out is great. Putting a huge amount of nitrogen out there and trying to cover your whole needs with a fall app, I think is pretty risky. Well, once again, we just really encourage you with fall nitrogen applications, Obviously, you got to look at the form and when you're going to apply, try to apply as late as possible in the fall. But look hard at your cation exchange capacity number and don't exceed 10 times your CEC for your total amount of nitrogen in that soil. That's kind of the limit. That's certainly our limit for what we would ever recommend to you. We definitely have some limits on weeds as well. We don't want to see any of our Weed of the Week out in the field. Can you identify this week's weed? Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate. So when conditions are right, be ready with genuine Case IH parts from Titan Machinery. Only genuine Case IH parts are engineered to keep your equipment running at peak efficiency when you're running around the clock. Don't risk your bottom line with off-brand parts that don't meet the same standards. Visit your local Titan Machinery dealership today to find out why genuine Case IH parts offer the best value and performance for your operation. I need results, so I choose the one system I trust to take weeds down and keep them down on even my toughest acres with the kind of yield potential that helps keep me in the black to deliver my kind of results season after season. I choose the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System. I choose results. 
It's been remarkable what we've seen out of the varieties of extend soybeans. The yield has come through for us. We had the best soybean crop we've ever had. The yields were there. With the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the yield boost and the lack of weed pressure really helps our bottom line. The technology has exceeded my expectations. It's one thing that the industry has been looking for for years. There's nothing like harvesting record crops. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at soilwarrior.com slash agphd. Seasons, weather patterns, pests, weeds, diseases, new trends, tools, and technology. While farming as we know it continues to change, NK helps you take on these new challenges by consistently maximizing your profit potential. Every acre, every single seed. NK Seeds, delivering technology, genetics, and value. Ask your retailer about 0% interest on NK corn and soybeans, available now through February 21st, 2020. You already know that fall is a great time for controlling weeds in winter crops, but fall is also an outstanding time for controlling winter annual weeds, perennial weeds, and even just getting ahead of spring annual weeds in spring crops and that's really going to be our focus today is talking about weed control for spring crops yet this fall. Brian, 2019 has been just a strange year. There's no question about it. And I have never taken as many calls in the fall as I have this year. What do I do? I've got unplanted acres, number one, that I intend to have planted to a crop next year. And number two, even in the fields I did get planted, wow, as the combine went through, there were still a ton of weeds out there and I'm concerned about the seed bank and what's going to happen next year and also just knocking some of these weeds out that are growing right now. But the good news is we have a lot of great herbicides. They are all cheaper in the fall than they will be in the spring. And if you just simply get them out there, not only can you burn everything down that's there right now, you can leave good residual going into the spring. So we're going to talk about some options for different weeds out there, but I want to start with this, mare's tail. Mare's tail is the number one winter annual weed that we have a lot of issues with in the Midwestern United States. And in my opinion, it's easy to control. You can go out there with a quart to Banville, you will wipe out 100% of your mare's tail as long as you're spraying a week or two before your first hard killing frost. And even if you spray after your first killing frost, you can still usually do a pretty good job on mare's tail. I just prefer to spray before the frost. Well, Brian sure does love his dicamba, and that's nice. You can kill things that are up, but it doesn't have a lot of residual, especially not killing residual into the spring. That's why we're gonna tank mix that with a heavy residual product, like Valor, for example. We're often using three to four ounces of Valor in the fall to get residual through the fall and into the spring as well, well. wait a second though, as you say, we're going to tank mix. We are not necessarily going to tank mix. It depends on what your weed spectrum is. If you're just after mare's tail, just go kill it all with Banville, you're done. Okay, if you're worried about spring kochia, spring water hemp, weeds that are just out of control in the spring, then yes, throw some valor with it. What we're trying well, I, to say I here I is- I disagree though, Brian. I think you need the valor in there all the time. Guys and aren't gonna why. spend an extra 10 bucks. Here, here's why you need it. Well, you're, you're also taking away from some of your spring application too. But I think you need it because you're going to have some late emergers that come up. And let's face it, if we get a long fall, and in some areas, it's really early fall right now, and there is quite a bit of growing season left, you're not gonna even have enough residual to carry into late November. So you do need to have something in there. Uh, yep, and, and again, I'm gonna disagree. It just depends on your situation. You might, you might not. On our farm, where we had no-till, and it was just mare's tail and dandelions, we wiped them all out in the fall, everything was perfectly clean in the spring, we had no valor. But yes, if you're in a little bit of tillage, you've had a disaster in the past with kochia and these other weeds, or if you're by further all south. means, get some valor in there. Yeah, it, that's the whole thing. And I, I would say this, if you haven't ever done a fall treatment, you're like, you know, I'm considering doing this fall treatment. If you're in the state of Nebraska, this is a no-brainer. You have to do this. You have to have that residual in there. And if again, like you're thinking along Brian's lines, I don't know if I want to spend that money, just do it on one batch. Do a 40 acre batch and leave the other 40 acres of your 80 acre field with just a straight bandville or even with nothing and then compare in the spring. 
I think next year you're going to do all residual product out there like a Valor along with your Dicamba or 240. The biggest objection most people have is, oh, I don't have enough time to get this done in the fall. I realize that. But what we're trying to say here is you have some fantastic options that are less expensive in the fall than they are in the spring, and you can get ahead of your weeds. It's so important. Take a half day, stop the combine, and go. And the other thing is this year, let's be honest, a lot of us have a few less acres to harvest because of prevent plant and everything else, so you might have an extra day or two. It doesn't take long to spray a whole bunch of acres. Fall burn downs and residual products are a great idea if you've got some winter annual broadleaf weeds, but our Weed of the Week may be a different story. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is Texas Panicum. I love when we talk about Texas Panicum because we'll always get feedback from people saying, wait a second, that looks like crabgrass to me, or it looks like broadleaf signal grass for me. So I'll tell you how to differentiate them. First of all, it's got hairy leaves, so it's not broadleaf signal grass. And second of all, pull back the leaf right where it hooks up to the stem and look for the ligule. With crabgrass, it has a membranous ligule. Texas Panicum has got some hairs on top of those membranes, so you can tell the difference that way. I don't really care which one of these weeds you have. They are all tough grass species to control, in part because it doesn't seem like our normal group 15s in corn will kill them, like Dual, Surpass, Harness, Outlook, Zidua. They're not very effective. So what we used to use is old eradicane. Now that that's off the market, hey, I and, would say And balance. eradicane, eradicane is also the same active ingredient as in a product called Eptam that gets used in quite a wide range of crops. So yeah, for many true. crops, if Eptam is labeled in the crop that you're growing, that would be a good option for this one. Yep, good idea. Uh, the other thing is, we don't have Roundup resistance issues with this. So any crop or any non-crop area where you can use glyphosate, you should be in good shape. The other corn product we should talk about is Accent, and it can be effective, but you have to use it really early in the season. We've had much better luck putting a full gallon per acre of 28% with it, in addition to a gallon per hundred of crop oil, and get the Texas Panicum when it's an inch tall. All right, in soybeans, this is an easy weed to control because soybeans are a broadleaf crop. This is a grass. So just start with one of the yellows, Trifluralin, Sonalan, Prowl, follow up with any of the post-emerge grass killers, you'll be in good shape. And one other thing to mention here, Brian, the, the family of chemistry that has Pursuit and Raptor is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. So if you have a clear field crop, you could use Beyond or whatever the clear field product is in your crop to try to control this as well. You've got to get it when it's small if you want to do a good job. Last crop we'll mention is wheat. I'd start with prepare, follow post-emerge with something like Axial or Everest 3.0. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, Texas Panicum, but Iron Talk is coming up next. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. 
Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planning? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for Springfield conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. At Harvest, you have one goal, finding the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bin. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow. Down corn is frustrating to combine and creates some issues even after harvest. I'll discuss why it happened and what to do in today's Iron Talk. If you had some corn go down this year and possibly even drop some ears, that's a tough situation. Now you've got to prep that field for the next crop and make some plans to avoid it happening again. Here are a few observations from down corn this fall. Long stalks laying every which way are a challenge for many types of operations. In our strip till, we've got a little challenge ahead of us in fields where the tops fell off the corn, and dealing with those longer pieces is, is not easy compared to where our chopping corn head is just sizing everything up for us just a few inches long. Coulter carts of various kinds or vertical tillage will do a nice job sizing that residue up so it flows through the next machine pass much better. Anthracnose stock rot was really bad this year again and impacted a broad geography across the country. Crop rotation can lessen the blow to some degree. Picking a more tolerant hybrid is key as well, as there are quite a few now that have come out in the last few years with significantly improved tolerance to anthracnose especially. We did see stock rots especially bad in areas that had excessive spring moisture, insufficient drainage tile, corn rootworm feeding, and especially with anthracnose in places where stressful conditions happen during and after pollination. Now, in some cases, there were other causes for lodging and eardrop that we really have to address as well. Planting populations this year, I've never seen a year where we had so many people overplant the conditions. And if they're too high for the fertility levels in your field, you're going to have problems. So as you're running through with the combine this fall, watch what your yield is and compare that to your planting population. If your yield per thousand seeds planted is less than seven, you likely overplanted. Make adjustments to your fertility program and your planting populations going into next year to avoid a similar fate. And if you got corn out in the field that's down right now, make those fields your next priority to get done. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, I want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. We're talking about great agronomic practices all the time on the radio show, and we take your live phone calls. It's on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.